I've taken two fitness classes in my life. Classes. Mm. One was a CrossFit. Mm-hmm. Not very enjoyable. Uh, the exercises, whatever, was fine. My instructor was just like, I worked with tons of CrossFitters from Ben Smith, one of the you know, top five. Yeah. He's the Kobe Bryant, right? If right. Rich Froning's the Jordan, Ben Smith's probably the Kobe Bryant. Maybe Matt Frazier, whatever. He's yeah. LeBron James. He's top three CrossFitters in history. Um, one of the nicest, coolest dudes I've ever hung out with. Yeah. Super cool, super open, wanting to learn. Uh, Colleen Foch, home girl of mine, strong, qualified for the games years in, years out. Jason Kalipa, right? We've worked out, hung out with all these people. Super cool, and they're literally at the top. Open-minded, wanting to mm-hmm. learn, want to get better. Um, but this is like what you, the, the internet meme of CrossFitters is the guy I'm talking about who just happened to coach me in class. Uh, I told him like, I forgot what the discussion was at this point. It was probably four years ago, five years ago. <clears throat> Something like, yo man, don't really do snatches. Kind of hurts my shoulders. Could I do this? Could I do a deadlift? Uh-huh. R- RDL? Yeah. Or chip roll? I'm just going to curl this thing yeah, instead, scale right? scale it. Who cares? Yeah. And yeah, I just like totally scale it. Yeah. Uh, instead of him asking what I do, who I am, what my history was, mm-hmm. he's like, "No, you should probably do that or something." All right, or I, I think I said that. I was like, "Yo, man, it's like my back. It's my pull day. I think I'm gonna do some because it was like snatches or overhead squats and chin ups." Mm-hmm. So, man, I'm gonna do curls and chin ups. Cool. Um, instead of just being like, "Yeah, man, do your thing," he's like, "Yeah, just flexed on me or something." And said, "All right, <laughs> but you got to curl the overhead weight." I'm like, "All right, bitch, I'll curl your overhead <laughs> weight." And it was like 95 pounds overhead squats. And so, like, we got an argument. He was talking about functionality of a bicep and functionality of a curl and all these things. And I just blew him out of the water. Moved on. Um, point being, not a great experience. Not a great experience. Um, and I knew there's there's good CrossFitters, there's bad CrossFitters. There's power lifters that are like that too, right? You go to their gym and you start working out and you just happen to put the bar kind of high on your back and some powerlifting coach screams at you like, that's not a real squat. Put that thing lower. Mm. Use your hips. There's bad apples and all the things we mm-hmm. do and extremists, or, right? Or, yeah, trying to trying to push people into a wide stance squat when they right. don't belong in one. Yeah, right. Yep. right. So there's those in every sport. I'm not picking on CrossFit. There's just as many bad powerlifting coaches and athletes and there's just as many bad weightlifting coaches mm. and athletes. Um, but that was my bad experience. Second class was last week. Um, our buddy Abs, Brian Washington, shout out to Brian, um, uh, who's an OG from our old, 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 old gym days where the podcast started, our podcasting adventure started. Yep. Um, he was a trainer there, uh, a friend of ours, also Ben Claridad. Um, really unique space in fitness. Uh, I think in the history of fitness, there probably hasn't been that much talent under one roof that I can think of um, in terms of coaches, uh, athletes, etc. Who knew? No one knew. But now all these people dispersed, uh, and they're all very successful, whether they open yeah. gyms, coaches, training, content creating, whatever it might yep. be. There's probably like six people that left there um, very successful. So one is my weightlifting coach, Ben Clairdad, Occam Athletics. Brian Washington is this other. Mm-hmm. Um, and he opened a gym, and he kind of just does general strength and conditioning for, you know, he does some athletes and stuff, but just kind of the general pop, you know, and he's right. really good at it. Super yeah, motivational. He has a, he's a lot of... Uh, Clients from the legislature. Yeah, yeah, the so capital like, capital yeah. work, uh, lawyers. Lobbyists. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of that, and then some athletes, and, um, you know, they'll do trap bar deadlifts and lunges, superset, whatever it might be. Just general stuff. Um, he's really good. Really energy, really uh, positive guy, fun to be around. Yep. But he recently opened uh, a place here, so we'll shout him out. All City Riders, um, which is like a cycling class, uh, and he puts his spin on it. Uh, Brian so and I got along well because, yeah, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, Brian and I got along well because uh, he was a little bit like me. Like he grew up playing basketball. He loves lifting weights. He was a musician. He was a mm, DJ, and so yep. we we had these commonalities, and we joked and talked about him a lot. We even went and played basketball a couple times together. Um, but so he kind of puts all this kind of funk and spin and style. He's really you know into fashion. Uh, so the branding of this place is really really cool. It looks like you're walking into the subway of a New York subway station yeah the sign actually yeah. got, looks like that too yeah, yeah and then yeah. there's neon signs everywhere and you go inside and there's like you don't really know it because it's dark when you walk in the room but there's obviously a big screen in the front that kind of has animated cyclists and your number of your bikes on there so you mm-hmm. know where you sit in the pack um brian's uh, energy is through the roof uh, and he controls this thing on like a little controller on his bike or he has an xbox controller and he's messing with the music and the lights and all mm-hmm. this stuff and again he was a dj so he mixes all his own music for these 
classes so the the beats per uh, minute are all up to pace on what you should be pedaling mm -hmm. he's screaming in your face it's high energy there's uh lights lining the roof uh, like led lights and they switch colors so sometimes it's like all blue it looks super cool on film and video and it's in, cool in person like the energy's good 20 people in there um, but that was my first experience of something like that and i've seen stuff you know of that nature working with reebok in the past they've dealt with tons and tons of fitness instructors um, over the years that we'd all have different events at or expos or whatever so some of them were more group class oriented some were more weightlifting crossfit or whatever mm -hmm. than me whatever the heck it is i do um, so i've been in that environment and they would lead us in the warm-up of the day or whatever right a hundred of us but nothing like this nature uh, and to be honest if my goals were general fitness i'd probably be taking this class Probably two or three times a week. Me and Connor talked about it. Like it was fun. It was an hour of biking. I probably burned, and the machine says, so who knows how accurate, but at least it's consistent. I burned like 600 calories. Mm. And so you just try to beat that a little bit every week. Um, and that's the end of my story. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Like the energy is good. Like when I do cardio by myself, my ADD kicks in. And so like I do it for like 20 minutes and I go hard and like I, my ADD stops me from before my lungs stop me or what I'm supposed to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. We're there. There's like people to look at. The screen's changing. The color's changing. He's playing really good music. There's just always something to do. You're always adjusting your resistance to go harder or lighter. I think it's perfect for someone uh, like me that can't concentrate on shit. Now, I have a friend who did the same kind of thing with yoga, believe it or not. So I you see somebody that we got to talk to at some point. It's difficult to catch up with. He's um, gotten himself awfully, awfully popular. Local? Uh, no, L.A. All right. L.A. Um, but, uh, just really interesting, different approach. Yeah. Like cycling is, can be very boring if you're just sitting in a whatever, Yeah, sitting in a gym or sitting in, you know, your garage on your air dine or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It can be pretty boring, but this place is all city riders is like a block from, from golden one center from, yeah, or less. from the arena. Yeah. yeah it's like right. really close. Just. The location's insane. It's yeah. a perfect location. Yeah. Well, we wish him great success. He's a yeah. good dude. Yeah, and so that's uh, the segue into my next story. Because <laughs> this took a long time for them to, to put that together. Yeah, I, I remember hearing about it like three years ago. Yeah, me too. Um, so I'm uh, 18, young Mike. Uh, played junior college basketball for a year. Didn't get along with my coach. Didn't like it. Uh, stopped. Moved back home. Uh, got into arguably the best shape, basketball shape of my life. I was playing basketball for four, five hours a day. Because mm. I was coaching varsity, playing in an adult semi-pro league, and just playing on my own to get mm. better. Lifting weights for uh, an hour or two a day. Co uh, the, in the coaching high school basketball, I was the assistant, so I just basically practiced with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and I, I taught stuff, but I, I didn't run the show. Um, and then I was going to class. So I would wake up 8 o'clock to noon classes, go lift weights, go coach high school basketball, then go play basketball. Best shape of my freaking life. Most research I've ever done in my life. I was just researching everything, and that's you know, the story of whatever I became into strength and conditioning and powerlifting. I was just researching nutrition, performance, reading everything I could from everyone, from, you know, Eric Helms and 3DMJ guys, Lane Norton, um, Eric Cressy, T Nation, mm -hmm. Jim Wendler, w w Louis Simmons, just reading everything under the sun that right. I could to learn. Um, and I had already had a personal training coach uh, for strength and conditioning since eighth grade. So I'd already been around an expert for six years. Um, I'd coach high school basketball, these things, Point being, I was like, well, I think I'm just going to open my own gym. Mm. Like, I don't see myself going back to college. Uh, I don't want to play basketball anymore. Uh, I did want to play basketball, but I didn't want to go back to college more than I wanted to play basketball. Um, so I ended up basically opening my own training facility. Uh, it was a warehouse uh, out actually very close to where Untamed Strength is. Oh. And Alan Thrall, who's our guest today, uh, Untamed Strength YouTuber, gym owner in Sacramento, very successful at all three, um, very successful lifter, coach, etc. cetera. Uh, his is literally down the street from where I opened my gym. He was in the Marines at the time, so I owned the first gym over in that area, <laughs> Mr. Untamed. Um, grabbed a business partner, maybe not my best decision, and we can go into that later when we talk to Alan about how to maybe do that, and that's the question of the day. How to open and run a successful gym, fitness studio, mm -hmm. cycling, business models, business uh, yeah, ba sense. Basically a, a, a small uh, niche market kind of fitness facility gym. And when we say small, we're just saying not franchise at 24 Yeah, yeah Do not, your own thing. Because yeah. even in tax sense, I think small business is like under 300 mil a year. Possibly, yeah. It's something of that nature. I don't know. I don't know what the what the exact number is, but at the same time, like uh, we're thinking about square footage to a certain degree, and we're yeah. thinking about um, non franchised, yeah, membership, like especially yeah. membership to 
to become sustainable yeah. to to get out of the red into the black and then actually make enough money. How do you set it up? How do you price it? How yeah. do you buy things? Um, and so my model, looking back at it, I had no business experience. I mean, I'd been quote unquote entrepreneurial in my mind my whole life. And mm-hmm. even though I didn't know it, you know, my first, I guess, business I started was in seventh grade. Me and my friend um, were in charge of one of the school dances. We were on the committee. And so we had to hire the DJ, get the lights, get the snacks and whatever, whatever. And we're looking at this budget and we're like, man, we're paying this dude 800 bucks to DJ music. He doesn't do anything. And then the show came and we had like a meeting afterwards with our teacher who was like our whatever advisor for the project. And, uh, him and I just ended up talking like he, we paid him 800 bucks for music. We didn't even like, like he didn't even know what these kids wanted to listen mm-hmm. to. Like, all right, dude, well next time let's go buy some of the equipment uh, ourselves like we'll 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 charge 600 bucks that'll give us enough equipment for some speakers and we're going to play the music everyone likes we're going to be cheaper for the school and the kids are going to like us so basically we started a dj company mm-hmm. um in sixth or seventh grade did that all the way through uh till he l- moved to la for college so we ended up doing weddings and now he's a famous dj no no he's not now he's uh <laughs> in politics uh <laughs> yeah his name was <laughs> dylan francis uh no none of that and i'm not either but uh we made a lot of money you know we, yeah. we made we did multiple gigs a month for six seven years uh-huh. and that's how i bought my first car et cetera, et cetera. so uh-huh. i had some business sense like all right we charge less than that guy and we just deliver more than that guy right Mm. so we charge 100 bucks less and we're just nicer and play better music like simple right but i didn't know brick and mortar and i didn't know real stuff so Mm -hmm. uh, my business model was a personal training facility no memberships no nothing you worked with me or you didn't work out in the gym um i was smart enough to start really small i started with like 800 900 square feet uh squat rack two squat racks some dumbbells etc so smart with some of that um and i think alan was too his first facility was really small i visited a strongman competition there uh, that he ran and it was tiny. Uh, he used a lot of outdoor space. Luckily again, we're in California, so he can use some outdoor space to do things. Right. Um, but now if you go to Alan's facility, it looks insane. It looks like a college facility. He has uh, let's see one, two, he has like probably six or seven squat racks, all wow. basically brand new. Um, Texas squat bar, power bars, deadlift bars, trap bars, all the strongman equipment you want from kind of the free stuff like a tire and like a you know a homemade rock. What do they call them? Stone. Stone. Uh, <laughs> homemade rock. Everyone just cringed. Like Mike, you've been band. doing this a long time. You just called it a rock. <laughs> atlas stone. All right, kids. It was just a little bit of a brain fart. I know what a freaking <laughs> atlas stone is. Uh, I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. So he had atlas stones. He has, but then all like the nice stuff too, like yeah. yoke and, and trap bars and farmers yeah. carries that are all fabricated and cost a little bit of money. Um, he has machines now. He has like a chest press machine. He has mm. a row. He has uh, fancy jerk blocks for weightlifting. He has bumper plates. He has so three, four competition benches. Um, he basically has everything any strength and conditioning person could ever want. In this place sleds. Um, assault bikes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, basically we're going to dig into the nitty gritty with Alan before we even give any of our experience really. Yeah, kind of how, whatever. how to start um, the accounting, the licensing, yeah. all that stuff. Insurance. 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 Yeah, insurance is a thing. I just, because I have to have insurance here and I just yeah. figured out that I was paying way too much. Yeah. Yeah. How to, uh, you know, he has cameras set up, his business model, maybe how many members you need, how to yeah. price it for your location. Um, so if you're ever interested in starting any company, I think you can take ideas from this, but especially oh, if you're trying to start, because those are all simple things. All my companies, luckily for me, have been online. So it's not less complicated, uh, but there's maybe less pieces sometimes, more complicated in some areas, less complicated in other areas. Um, but we're going to get into some brick and mortar business talk with Alan Thrall on Team Strength. Some people may or may not know me in real life. Shout out to those that do, you lucky <laughs> bastards. But you you know, one, the show was named after, I guess, me. Yeah, In a selfish way. Is yeah. it, because I always got to be right. Uh, I started off saying that the Italians and the Nazis invented Nutella. And although that may be a hair of a reach, it is correct. And <laughs> to make sure that you're sort right. Of. It, sort of just correct. Google it. It's right. Uh, and to make sure that you're correct, because everybody loves to be right, whether you're arguing with your friends, you're exploring your knowledge in life, trivia, whatever it might be, uh, we teamed up with the Great Courses Plus, which is a resource of knowledge, thousands and thousands and thousands of videos on any topic you want to learn from business, entrepreneurship, to fitness, physiology, history, anything of that nature. I uh, was checking out the ones on... Uh, 
the history of England and Scotland and Wales and Ireland uh, over the weekend. I hadn't really seen any of them. And I, I actually was there last year about this time, as a matter of fact. And there were so many things I missed. And I, now I need to go back. Uh, There's a lot of great information. It's really easy to consume it. The, um, uh, there are um, so many different topics. Pretty much anybody can get something out of uh, a subscription with the great courses. Uh, so many different um, ways to consume the information as well, because apparently there's an app, and if you want to just listen as opposed to watching, uh, we are just like use it kind of like you'd use a podcast to to fill time. Although you should keep listening to this one because we're we're just in so much alignment with uh, what the great courses plus is providing. Uh, like I said, thousands of lectures, all by top-level teachers, uh, professors, et cetera, et cetera, on as many topics as you want. I'm probably going to check out some of the business stuff, as you guys know I dropped out of college. But I want to get my learnt on a um, dun- bunch of different courses, I guess, on the app. Again, audio, if you want to check it out. In particular, they have a physiology and fitness course. If you guys want to learn about um, what this video is about, uh, home gyms, or this t- uh, yep. podcast is about home gyms, building your workouts, et cetera. The physiology and fitness um, lecture will teach you about what's happening within your body, uh, what's going on exactly while you're training uh, and building out your workouts, some knowledge to create your own fitness routines. And right now, thanks to The Great Courses Plus, we have teamed up and we worked out a fantastic deal to get you guys an entire month for free. That's a full free month to unlimited access to all the lectures they have, all thousands, tons of different topics. Uh, All you have to do is sign up today TheGreatCoursesPlus.com slash facts, F-A-C-T-S. That's TheGreatCoursesPlus.com slash facts for a free month unlimited courses. Get in there now. Check this out. Um, No point in letting this uh, sit around. There's information in there that you probably would love to get today. So uh, check it out, TheGreatCoursesPlus.com slash facts, F-A-C-T-S, facts. Get your learn on. Ladies and gentlemen, Al and Thrall back again. And today we're going to put on our... Um, we're in Thrall Did you graduate college, Thrall? Nope. Me neither. So today we're going to put on <laughs> our college textbook hats. Jim's the only one with multiple degrees here. Uh, two. And two degrees. Uh, we have zero, so we almost have an average of one in the building. But <laughs> Some college. Some college. Some college. Some college. Yeah, that's, sure. a, so that's that, a check that, box. Yeah, something, yeah. 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 Uh, together <laughs> we may have a degree. Uh, but you do have uh, a lot more life experience than many people and a very successful gym um and almost i'd like to say and i don't know how know how this will come across don't be insulted if it does i think it's successful despite your youtube your youtube is uh, highly yeah. successful mm-hmm. but your gym is also very successful but it's not like other people and that's not throwing flame either way but we know a lot of people got successful on youtube opened a gym and then the gym's pretty successful mm. yours was hand in hand and you're uh, they, you almost run them separately. Mm-hmm. It's not like you're on your YouTube like, come to my gym, come to my gym, come yeah. to my gym. Uh, you just make informational uh, stuff at your gym. And we're in Sacramento. It, it, there are gyms here, but it's not like, there's like good training here and there's a yeah. b- good environment, but it's not like this is the most populated powerlifting area in the no. world. We have a lot of fitness going on here. You know, Matt Ogus, he actually went to the same high school as you. He's big, big on YouTube. We yeah. went to the same gym. Same same California Funny Fitness. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to that one a couple times because my buddy's out there. I'll yeah. like Greenback. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and so there's like a lot of that going on, but it's not like the community of lifters is here yet. You've built the community yourself and your gym's very successful. So we want to talk business sense on how to run a, a successful gym. Uh, and by successful, I think it's pretty clear in this case because people argue that all the time. Well, I'm happy. Fuck your successful word. We're talking about making money. Uh, <laughs> right. We're talking yeah. about how do you sustain a gym, live off of it. Um, X's and O's, and we're going to hopefully dig right in. And not have to sleep in it because you can't afford to live anywhere else or any True. of those things. Yeah. You might have to for a little while. Yeah, yeah. But, but now you got a baby. Yeah, baby, you can't sleep there, so yeah, you got to really yeah, pull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was fortunate when I started <laughs> to not have anything. Caitlin was my girlfriend at the time, but uh, didn't have a house, didn't have kids, so it was like, let's go all in. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I wasn't like, what if I can't pay my mortgage? Or what, yeah. if, I, you know, what if my kid doesn't have food? It wasn't. So I was fortunate in that sense. Yeah. So yeah, you, you took a risk at the right time. It's harder <laughs> right. when you're 50 and you yeah. have a bunch of family and kids to feed. Yep. Yeah. Um, what, what are steps one? Um, you know, your, your instance, uh, maybe we can kind of travel through this journey uh, from two points of view. Um, what you did do as a young, wild, untamed man, mm-hmm. um, and then maybe what you actually recommend because they may not always line up because uh, I've told Alan and we've talked a little bit pre-recording uh, this with you that I opened a gym 
before you in the same area, but yours was successful and mine flopped. But I was the first man, and there's a lot of things that I did do as a 18 year old trying to open a gym that were okay. And there's a lot of things as an 18 year old that now I look back like, eh, should have done that differently, right? So we'll, we'll yeah. go maybe what you recommend, and then uh, maybe what you did. So step number one, opening a gym. Um, so I would. Uh there's not a whole lot of uh, things that I regret doing or saying I would have done this differently or I would have done that. Uh, I wouldn't have done this because I, I did learn uh, something from everything, whether good or bad experience. Um, and I will say that I, I completely went about the whole thing uh, irresponsibly from like a, <laughs> from a business standpoint. Like if I was at a, you know, uh, an, a business college uh, class and I told the story, They'd be like, mm, you did just about everything wrong. <laughs> um, uh, but it was, it was just a, a huge passion uh, and, and uh, uh, determination to do it, you know, to start a gym. Um, but step one, man, that's a hard question to ask. Like from uh, logistics would be f- find a warehouse or, or whatever you're going to do. Find a location mm-hmm. um, and then, you know, uh, go from there as far as, uh, leasing and how long you're going to, uh, be there. But if you can acquire equipment beforehand, that's always good too. So that when you have this, you know, you can close the gap between getting a gym and getting equipment. Um, but first you need to find a location to answer the question. What are thoughts, uh, went into young Alan making a location decision and then what are thoughts maybe you would put in now? Because I, I agree with you, um, that you know if you build it they will come and i think that's how you and i think um as kind of entrepreneurs but if we go to this business class they're saying location location we need uh you know what what people walking around we need food nearby we need a gas station and a highway and you know they, they have these criteria um but honestly your other location was kind of in the middle of nowhere and yeah, you made it yeah, happen. that's uh not always realistic yeah the the first thing i would say is uh one uh, I need a location that's uh, somewhat sustainable. I signed my first location. I signed a two-year lease, and I started with nothing. I had no, I had no business experience. Uh, mm-hmm. I never worked in a gym, never owned a gym, um, and I didn't have any clients built up. I got out of the Marine Corps and, and went for it. So I didn't. It's not like I was training at 24-hour fitness. And I said, Hey, I've got like 15 clients. I've talked to them about coming over to this gym. I'm going to start. And there wasn't anything like that. Which is the normal move and not not a dumb one yeah yeah no not at all if you want to like uh uh uh, build up clientele at another gym and then and then move over that's a good idea um so it was i didn't want to get a huge location at first because i had no one to to put it in um so i i uh, (laughs) sit there by yourself (laughs) yeah really gigantic warehouse gym gym. yeah with no yeah no clients no members right um so i wanted to i wanted to start small um and then uh um from there something that i could like uh, realistically afford. Um, I actually sat, sat down and crunched some numbers to say, if I don't, if I don't make any money for a year, can I, uh, can I, can I pay rent? And I had enough saved up to, to last me a year. Um, if I didn't make a dollar, uh, that I had that money saved up, which isn't that um, unthinkable. No, I, <clears throat> I usually tell people, you know, how much should I have saved up for a gym? That depends on a number of things. You know, if, location obviously if i'm getting a thousand square feet in downtown yeah. sacramento or a thousand square feet on auburn boulevard <laughs> much differently priced um uh and as far as how big is the location going to be um you just crunch numbers of how many squat racks do i want yeah. how many barbells do i need how many people can i realistically fit in here how many members can i realistically have mm. uh um, um and so crunch all those numbers um um and then, you know, get a location, uh, according to that. Um, and anyways, about saving money. And then from there, you know, all that money aside, I suggest like having a year saved up a year of rent saved up. Um, it's probably a good idea. Uh, for maybe you and the gym, right? Cause it's like life. And yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's not going to be, uh, I'm going to put all my savings into this gym, open it up, you know, the first of the month. And it's like, you know, you know, profit's not going to come right away. Um, so it's good to have some money, some money saved up. Um, when you said unexpected uh, expenses, sorry. Uh, unexpected yeah. expenses at the beginning, were there any? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, all of it was a learning experience. Like, uh, it, Hey, I'm, go- uh, I want to lease this place. Um, and then it was like, okay, sounds good. Uh, we need a, your first month's rent. I said, okay, I got it. Uh, also last month's rent. Uh, okay. I got that. Also security deposit, which is m- rent. So I'm like paying three months rent three months just rent to start, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just get the key. Um, so, so things like that. Um, business license. 
Uh, yeah, but that's that's pretty cheap. Um, uh, so yeah, business license and and couple hundred, couple hundred right. for those out there that yeah yeah. 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 Um, and then you got to get insurance. Um, and so what uh, do some of those numbers look like? Like zoning, insurance, uh, money wise, and even figuring it out. That yeah, that again, that all depends on the location. And there's like uh, uh, for example, I didn't have, I wasn't tagged with a whole lot of. Uh, Exp- unexpected expenses mm-hmm. and and fees and whatnot and, and zoning like you said um when i wanted to open a open my own gym or fitness facility in sacramento but i know uh i know people who actually used to be members who opened up a gym in uh lodi um it's not they're they closed it down but they were like getting hit with tons of fees and then it was like uh oh you also need a men's restroom and a women's restroom you need a handicap uh, oh. stall. And so they like had all these things. Uh, and then it was like uh, uh, the zoning for fire code is out. So we need to, uh, you need to like take down this wall. And if you want to do this and put in a door here, I didn't, luckily didn't have any of that. And I, I think it's just Sacramento County. I yeah. don't know. It's a little simpler. Uh, but it, but it, yeah, I'm sure it's different state to state and county to county. Um, but I was pretty fortunate to, to, you know, like either not have those or like, sidestep them but uh (laughs) but so yeah um i know that if uh, there are actually differences about whether or not you have an a gym it's literally a gym or if it's a personal training studio or mm -hmm. private studio or whatever the the i think in sac at least the uh regulations around the private studios are a lot more lax than a gym yeah and i uh certainly i will say hands down uh that i i uh uh downplayed exactly what i was doing like even when yeah. i first started out it was like I think that's, that's i'm gonna be doing yeah some and they were like asking me to categorize it when i went to go get my business license and i was like it's like a fitness and then, and one of them was like fitness studio and i was like yeah that sounds right yeah um and at the time it was it wasn't like a gym like it is now mm-hmm. it was just me training people so everyone mm-hmm. who, who yeah. would come to the gym I'd, I'd train them whether personally or, or in a group um so it was like a fitness studio I, and even with the landlord um it was like hey what are you gonna do in here i was like Oh, you know, some exercise and fitness. I didn't say I'm rolling in these 300 pound Atlas stones. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're doing, we're going to be deadlifting, you know, 600 pounds. I downplayed all that. Um, um, which I don't think is always a good idea when you're, uh, when you're talking to landlords or insurance <laughs> companies, but it, that was all, that was all definitely downplayed. Those are young Allen moves. Not yeah. Old so Allen I guess moves. that was, that was, uh, looking back on what I would do differently. Um, uh, that's one thing I would be a little more honest, uh, with what you're actually doing because the second location was a huge pain in the ass. And thankfully I was only there for a year before I could leave. Um, but, uh, I didn't realize how strict they were going to be about rules and how like in my ass every day they would be about everything, about the music, about parking, about making noise, like dropping mm. deadlifts. Um, it was such a pain in the ass dealing with the, it was almost like the warehouse was in like a HOA warehouse community yeah. where it was like, I couldn't, I was like, are you kidding me? Like there's so many stories of like, we weren't allowed to go on, We weren't allowed to step outside the warehouse. So if we want to do tire flips, like in the parking lot, yeah, they're mad. Uh, they would literally, there are cameras and it'd be like a Sunday afternoon. We'd go do a couple tire flips right outside. And I get a phone call immediately. Um, one time it was one of the members birthdays and I brought my tiny little grill and I'm grilling up hamburgers outside get a phone call you cannot be conducting business out i'm like man they had a huge parking lot uh that was tucked away in the back big parking lot uh and and apparently it was probably in the the contract that i didn't read uh but it's uh, <laughs> but they're like you're only allowed two parking spots it was an entire parking lot empty and they would call me and say there's no there's nobody working right now i see five cars in the parking lot you're allowed two like on a weekend yeah and so it's just stuff like that that i was like i cannot wait to get out of here they're driving me crazy so that's that, where maybe that location does matter and like it's things you don't think about but yeah. like uh and just so those that don't know who haven't been to untamed want to suggest you visit but two i grew up in the same area as alan so we know these areas well it's literally like mechanics the whole sh- oh, like yeah. there's there's three miles of maybe one billiard hall near you and the rest are mechanics tire shops mm. lift your truck shops like and stuff. abandoned strip clubs yeah and like tattoo parlors like that's yeah. all that's out there so it's not like but i could see this being an even bigger issue if you're trying to do it in a downtown if you're trying to do yeah. it somewhere metro or, or like a strip mall mm. you really got to be uh, maybe even more honest with your fucking landlord so you oh, don't yeah. get kicked out and you just say like yeah w- there'll be some noise there'll be mm. some yeah, people if you coming were like out. uh you know hey this this uh, second story looks awesome 
you know, like, yeah. you should probably talk to the landlord, tell them what you're going to be doing before you get in there. Uh, it was the same with, uh, uh, Joey Zatmary who owns a gym in Pennsylvania, the lion's den. He had a similar issue with like the, his, his initial location, I think, but s- similar thing. It was like, uh, just noise complaints every day. And it was like, we're not, we're literally like doing, we're just like running around and doing burpees and having yeah. music on, you know, but just, uh, uh, there was issues like that all the time they which, had to deal with which is which crazy is, that like a 24-hour fitness obviously money talks but those places are always in a strip mall yeah. they're always in a big location or, or even a lot of crossfits i've seen um which is crazy and i wonder what the headaches they deal with because a lot of crossfits i've seen some are warehousey style mm-hmm. um but a lot of them are in like a strip mall and i'm like man they're you gotta, loud yeah, yeah you yeah. they're right next to a lululemon i'm sure lululemon is pissed yeah 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 Possibly. exactly yeah something to think about too in terms of insurance this is something i just learned is that if Try to find people who are in a similar business who have to carry insurance too and figure out who they are using. You will definitely f- get, either get better coverage or save money or both. Um, I just that ex- had that experience here where I was paying a fortune and I finally said, I can't pay this fortune anymore. This is ridiculous to my agent. And they're like, oh, we don't help you. And I, yeah. <laughs> I went to somebody who also does you know entertainment kind of stuff and and said who do you use and he said here let me hook you me hook you up with somebody that actually i already knew but i just didn't know what he did and i'm now paying a third of what i was paying before oh, man. because yeah. he had an understanding of what the business is yeah yeah and and if you just if you just list all of the activities that are going to happen in this place they are going to choose the most expensive um uh plan for you as opposed to what you actually need in terms of coverages yeah so maybe if you know uh, another gym owner uh <clears throat> well and you could just talk to them hey you know what should i go with uh and yeah like you said they can refer you i was fortunate enough that when i my roommate at the time when i was looking for the first gym was a commercial real estate agent so uh, he was a, he was able to help me find uh, a location and then and then he was like yeah based off what you're doing uh you know i would suggest going with this insurance company yeah, and so easy. yeah um making money so you, you get a location you get some equipment and we can bypass the equipment stuff check out the other episode on building a home gym it's probably very similar alan's thoughts and general thoughts on it depending on who you want to train and what the goals are of the gym you can choose those equipments i don't want to get in that right now we want to talk about making money uh how do you get your first client you didn't have a youtube you're not internet famous you're not untamed strength the alan thrall we all know you are your beard is much you're shorter. You're a thrall or nothing. You're yeah. thrall or nothing. I just learned. <laughs> no, thrall day long. Oh, thrall, thrall day long. Thrall day Damn long. It. A thrall day long at the time. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're the, no, all pitches are like all like sign outs suck. I've tried. I've been podcasting for five years. I still can't think of a sign out I like. <laughs> Everyone just sounds dumb in my head. So you're a thrall day long, soon to be untamed. But how do you get the first dude in the door to make them money and to pay you? Um, the man. Uh, that's a good question. It I don't I don't know if there's I don't really know like a, a surefire way that works every time. Um, I can only just tell you my experience, yeah. uh, and time was definitely the only thing that that I that works. Um, just give it some time. Uh, word of mouth is probably the most powerful thing. If you just provide a good service to you know a couple people, they're gonna tell someone else. But the first month, I had I didn't really know what I was doing, and and as far as like getting the equipment, signing the lease. And, and getting the key, it was very quick. So I, I, I was like, I need to do something now. I need to get people in the door. So I made the first month free. I was like, I don't, I just, just like, just people come in, you know? Um, so I made the first month free. Um, and it, I would say, uh, that man, it was probably like half a year, probably like six months until someone signed up that, uh, didn't have like an immediate connection to the gym, meaning I was training my brothers and my girlfriend, yeah. wife, you know, now, uh, her friends, they would bring friends. Uh, so it was all these people I knew that I was training for a while. And then it was like, someone was like, uh, Hey, heard about this gym, uh, you know, whatever, yeah. which, which was cool. But, um, so what I did again, I can just share my experience before I opened the gym. I actually got to work, uh, at, uh, Bella Vista high school. Um, uh, for the summer before I opened the gym as the, the football, uh, strength conditioning coach, just a bunch of fat old coaches who <laughs> I went and talked to, uh, one of them used to be my coach. Um, and I was like, Hey, uh, if you guys don't have anything going on for this summer camp, yeah. uh, I'd love to help. And they were like, do you want to just do it? <laughs> I was like, sure. So, uh, so I got to, uh, be in charge of coaching these kids. Uh, not only to learn a lot after that, but 
that was my first audience to talk to and be mm. like, Hey guys, I'm opening a gym, you know, once, once summer's over, uh, and you guys, you know, you want to continue this kind of stuff, come to the gym. Um, and, uh, I actually, uh, would, I went, uh, one time when they were having a team meeting and I said, uh, I said, Hey guys, I will come here, uh, every day, Monday through Thursday. I will, uh, come to school at 3 PM. And I said, I've got five spots in my truck. Anyone who wants to come, I'll drive you there. Uh, and so there were probably like four guys that showed up and, and then eventually three guys and two guys. But anyways, I was driving, uh, uh, the football players from Bella Vista. I'd go pick them up and drive them to the gym. I did the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. I had a basketball. So, I was coaching high school basketball. I was just like, some of them were freshmen and sophomores. I was like, yo, you got to get to my gym. Like yeah. we want to, but you know, mom, I'm like, bitch, I'm picking you up. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I did. You're was like, whip. Let's was, roll. Yeah. That's how I did it. I was just like, there's, I'm literally going to bring you to the gym <laughs> yeah. uh, and have you stick around. But, yeah. but uh, at first it was like four people and then it sounds like so three, dumb. Uh, when I tell, but like, it was just like, it's what I had to do. Yeah. yeah, dude, yeah. I, I was literally like, I'm not like, what else? what yeah. else am I going to do? Yeah. Uh, a, uh, a cool ending to that. <laughs> Eventually it was only one dude. I would Ooh, drive, who is that? I would drive to the gym, pick this dude up, drive to the gym, pick this dude up. It was punch nugget. Punch nugget. <laughs> the legend. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and he's still there today, smashing weights. Yeah, but anyways, uh, um, and so, uh, so I started, uh, getting, uh, you know, these, these high school kids, uh, but that didn't really stick. It didn't really yeah. last. Um, and, Man, it was probably uh, approaching a year when I was like, I don't know where I'm going. I don't have any like I have a really hard time telling people what this gym is about because I still don't really know. You know, like <laughs> nothing's sticking. Um, and I had tried all the you know old school forms of marketing, like uh, like door to door stuff mm -hmm. and like throwing out uh, 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 postcards. Yeah. I had like the little bags with the rock in it and the, oh, yeah, the flyer yeah. and I, we'd throw them out. None of that stuff worked. Um, and, uh, uh, eventually I was talking to Caitlin, uh, and I was like, I don't know. Uh, like I literally am stuck. I don't know what to do anymore. And she was like, why don't you, I was competing in strongman competitions every once in a while. Uh, and she was like, why don't you host one of those at your gym? And, uh, the immediate thought was like Bing. doubt. No, oh, it wasn't. Really? It was like, it's like a, this, I can't host a competition here. Like, I don't know how, um, I don't know. You know I just don't know the logistics of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, uh, after, you know, thinking about it, I was like, I didn't really know how to open a gym either, but I did. <laughs> so I guess I could figure this out. So I hosted a strongman competition at the gym. Uh, and that how was many, like, how many did you hold at the first gym? A lot? No. Uh, three. Cause I went to one of them. I didn't know three you. Three or four? Yeah, I didn't know you. But yeah, I, went to I think you ones. went to the one with uh, Bobby. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so that w that was not the first competition, but th yeah, that yeah. was like hosting a competition like that. Uh, and I remember um, when I hosted that competition that day, seeing how many people came to the gym mm. was overwhelming, and uh, uh, the competition sucked because of it. Like it was a tiny location. I wasn't completely certain of what I was doing, but that was a lot of eyes on the gym. Um, and then from there it was like slowly people kind of trickling in and like, Hey, my friend, uh, said that you guys had a strongman competition. I'd like to try some of this out. And so I started, uh, running with the strongman thing. I did have strongman in the initial like tagline of the gym, mm -hmm. but I tried to like cater to everything. I was like, it's a powerlifting gym, a weightlifting gym, a strongman gym, athletic conditioning. I was just like my yeah. business cards. Are like Yoga. Everything. Yeah. I literally, and whatever you want to do, come to <laughs> it at this gym and it didn't work. But then I was like, that's it. Strongman only. And I would like even put like Sacramento's only strongman gym. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, Which uh, is true probably. Yeah. 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 Uh, probably uh, still is true. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that started working pretty well for me. Um, and then, uh, slowly there were, as the gym got, uh, better and better, a better and better strongman gym. There were a lot of people coming in and, and uh, saying, you know, looking for powerlifting needs. I'd like a, a, you know, a place to squat, maybe a good barbell. So I started getting more powerlifting stuff, and then powerlifting kind of took over, and it's probably more popular now than the strongman. Um, so it was like powerlifting and strongman. And anyways, uh, uh, so once I finally decided to like actually aim at something and say. I'm going to be a strong man gym and run with that, that like, uh, I was able to focus. And I think that, that helped most when you got the 
first competition you saw those people was it pretty immediate you started to see some legs like people showing up you're like all right now now this is like a business and we're moving like i'm heading the right way yes yeah yeah i was uh i uh, for uh it eventually got to the point where i was getting like overwhelmed because the gym was so small um that i was getting a lot of people in there and at first i was kind of like flustered like i don't know how to do this like but then i was like this is this is actually a good problem to have yeah 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 to outgrow this place. Uh, and then I moved to the second location uh, and I wanted the same thing to happen. I was like, I want to get uncomfortably crowded Big. in here. Um, and so that was like my goal is to like outgrow it. That was my next question is when do you know when to move up? So you started small. Do you know square footage your first place? Yeah. Um, square footage of the first place was 1,500 square feet, but it had a huge bathroom. <laughs> it had an office. Yeah. And it had a huge... Uh, probably like a third of the gym um, was really low ceilings. You couldn't put a squat rack in it. Yeah. So it was like our storage. Yeah. Um, so usable space. 500? Yeah, six, seven, yeah. maybe. Yeah, um, that's what the, I started with. I started with 700, 750 yeah. in a where literally a, a roll cage, like a storage unit almost. Mm. Yep. Um, yeah. So how do you know when to move? Was it a, a crowded by person? Was it a crowded by member? Was it a money thing? How do you know and when did you know to expand? Um, Both times, I guess, since you've done it twice now a little bit. It was definitely, uh, we are getting too crowded. There's not enough equipment or squat racks for all the people waiting around. So there's, there's more members. Uh, I was at the point where I said I can probably afford this much more rent. Uh, and so I just kind of looked at the lo- locations, uh, that, that I could afford. And then it was also, uh, I didn't want to sign another lease. So my first lease was two years. And so as two years was approaching, I was like, I'm not going to sign again. I don't, I don't like this landlord and I want to move. So that pushed me to like find a place quick. And, uh, um, and so I would say that like, once you can afford it, and then if you really are, uh, uh, overcrowded or it really, the place didn't really work for us. We, uh, found out the hard way that, um, the floors were really thin. Mm. Uh, we destroyed the floor doing deadlifts. Ooh. We, uh, we had a stone punch a hole in the floor, like oh, dropping shit. in. Um, so we, yeah, the place was, uh, pretty beat up um so we knew like the stuff that we're doing just not working yeah. here. um so we need to move you know but you should be able to afford it and starting out from where you started out uh, initially to crunch numbers and say how many how many members do i want in the next year um how much is membership how much money would i be making what can i afford rather than just saying like oh ten thousand dollar rent go for it yeah you know what i mean so so what did you do about like membership accounting and like trying to keep because that's a, a thing that I've seen plenty in in powerlifting gyms is like or this kind of gym more a a, a not a globo gym yeah. where keeping people like paying every month and not having to constantly chase them for their membership dues and, yeah it's it uh, always has been and still is just a it's just PayPal uh, um, it's like PayPal business uh, type. Uh, subscription. So when someone signs up for the gym, it's just a PayPal. Um, and it just hits. Them. Yeah. Reoccurs. Yeah. yeah. So it's reoccurring. Um, the fees, I think for once you're, once you make a certain amount of money on PayPal, I guess the fees actually go down. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, um, and it's like some, some sort of like actual business uh, accounting. Mm. Uh, but anyways, PayPal works because uh, it's familiar with everyone. Um, whenever people sign up, and it's like always weird talking to people about memberships or taking their money. Um, but when you're like, yeah, it's just PayPal, they're like, oh, I got a PayPal account, sweet. Um, so anyways, it's automatic. Uh, and if it fails, PayPal takes care of it, or I'll send them an email, uh, hey, your payment failed. Um, but I don't I don't uh, accept cash from anyone. Mm-hmm. I did for a while, and that you can obviously know that's a pain in the ass yeah. to try to hunt, hunt people down for cash. Um, so it's, it's just always been PayPal. Uh, what do you do about the 24 hour access? How do people get in? Uh, you, I'm not, I'm assuming not everybody has a key or no, everyone, they, has. everyone uh, well, has a key. Well, yeah, almost everyone I have, I do a strongman conditioning class mm-hmm. three times a week. Uh, and there are, that's included, uh, in the membership. So you can come join those classes. Uh, but I'm, I'm a member. <laughs> some people do just that strongman conditioning class. Uh-huh. Um, and they, they pay a, a lower 
uh, membership and they don't have a key fob. They just show up to the classes. Um, but if you have the 24 hour access, you get your own key fob that you just buzz into the front door. Yeah. What okay. was some of the thought process and things going to that? Was there more insurance? I know, I think you have cameras, like, mm-hmm. uh, you obviously have this fancy mechanical thing on the door. What was some of that process of switching from, uh, personal training one one to just being an open gym style to be now 24 hour access? Yeah, it was, uh, it actually got to the point where, um, I was, I was, you know, getting these members, uh, and I was getting some members that were sticking around. And then I remember it was limited. I didn't, I don't I still don't have any employees and I didn't have any employees. So I always had to be there when the gym was open, I'd be there all day. Mm. Um, and, uh, um, it was, it was, there were a couple of members who were, uh, on a couple of different occasions. Hey, I can't go to the gym anymore. You know, I'm working, uh, night shift now. Or, or whatever my my shift schedule changed um uh, so i just can't make the hours um and i was like i can't lose these members you know what i mean so i was like hey dude i'll just give you a key you know what i mean and so they would come in like yeah. with an actual physical key mm-hmm. and i i was handing out quite a few of these keys because people were not able to come during normal hours um and then there were other times where i was like hey you know i'm i'm here at, at 7 a.m gym closes at 9 p.m. and I'm I'm literally there all day and then it was like 9 p.m. I'm ready to leave but there were still members in there and I'm like dude I don't want to tell them they have to leave and so I, like I'd, I'd be like hey dude here's a key just mm-hmm. lock up when you leave um, so I was just doing that and it was kind of getting out of control um, and so that's that's where I said I might as well just make this thing 24-hour access um, and it, it w- there's no way looking back that I would have done that at the start uh-huh. Um, but this was like three years into it when I had the, you know, majority of the members I knew really well, uh, and I could trust them. So I knew that there's always going to be someone at the gym, uh, who knows how the gym works and people that I can trust. Um, and so if new members did come in, there were always people there that could, you know, keep an eye on the place. Um, so it was a pretty easy transition over to the 24 hour access. Um, and it was it just freed up my time too, so I didn't have to literally be there from seven a.m. to nine p.m. Um, so I can leave and close the jo- close the door or lock it. Yeah, um, that is so. we- uh, funny because it's uh, a business and like sociology experiment going on at the same thing. <laughs> uh, because you're right, if you would have started from the beginning, you didn't know anybody, and you've told me funny stories that we probably won't tell on air of <laughs> members in the past or yeah. whatever. Um, but if they were there in the beginning, your, your business might literally tank. Right. Um, because other people are like, this guy's doing this in the gym, I'm out, I'm not training yeah. here anymore. Yeah, Where yeah. now you have, you know, for lack of a better word, a, a cult around you. People right. love you, they love the gym, they love lifting weights, they trust the system, they trust you, and they'll just tell that person, hey, knock it off. We yeah. don't do that here. Or, hey, you left last year, didn't close the gate you're closing the gate next time yeah. uh, and it's much more of like a enlarged team yeah uh, than it is just a random gym although some places i don't know is any time i guess would probably be the place it does 24-hour access mm-hmm. and who knows how they get around it they might have some an employee there 24 7 but yeah uh, it seems very hairy i think maybe they do but yeah. i don't i don't know, I don't know either sure never been but, but I know they're the only ones that pop in my head. Or 24-hour fitness, obviously, uh, doesn't have a key fob, but a lot of them are 24-hour, and they just have some staff on hand 24-7. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're signing in with your finger and your phone yeah. number and, yeah. you know, whatever. But, DNA. But those are totally different models because they're franchises or, right. or, or, right. They're, or whatever. You know, they're chains. It's an entirely different experience when it's just, you know, it's all you. And yeah, then, and it's, like, very personal. Like, I've, yeah. I've like you know, made this gym. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like pe- letting people in your garage to train, right, yeah. you know, when you're not there, it's, uh, there was definitely like, I needed to just, uh, jump ship and just trust that it was going to work. It was never like, Oh dude, I can't wait to do this. It was like a little apprehensive at first, but, uh, there's never been any serious issues, uh, with the whole thing. So, so what about the future? Are you, are you happy with where things are now or do you have like plans to do something in the future? If like you hit certain milestones or whatever you would say, I want to do this or I want to do that. Yeah. Uh, by the end of the year, I am hoping to expand next door. I think mm. they're leaving. Um, I really do not want to move. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving the last location was a huge deal. And that I have way less equipment. So it would just be not only moving the actual act of moving everything, um, but just like uprooting everyone's routine. It would just be really, uh, I don't know. It would probably upset a lot of people. Maybe some people will be happy about it, but I don't want to move anytime in the next five years at least. So I'd like to expand over. Um, 
uh, and kind of make like a strong man side and a powerlifting side. That makes sense. Um, yeah. And you got have a lot of equipment now. That's something yeah. uh, I've been a member almost two years, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously we've been friends for longer and I visited before that. I've been to each location, but been a regular ish member, uh, for two years. And the amount of change in the gym that Alan puts in time and money, uh, towards new equipment is insane. I haven't seen that at any gym commercial or otherwise any, anywhere in my 15 years of lifting weights. Yeah. If you constantly upgrading, if you come at, um, you know, like on Monday, 6 p.m., 7 p.m. is packed. Yeah, jam. Um, it's, it's I, I don't cool think I ever have. I should probably no, just to see. Yeah, it. it's packed, dude. It's and it's cool because everyone's in there. There's not like some dickhead in the squat rack curling. Yeah. Uh, everyone's in there doing pretty much the same thing. And you can and work in with anyone. Right, 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 right. Normally, people are cool. Few people on the rack for a squat, so it's it's crowded in a in a cool way. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I'll look at the gym sometimes. And be like, this is a madhouse. Yeah. Like literally, everyone just slamming deadlifts and, and yeah, chalking cool, up. And yeah, it is. It's really cool to see. Uh, what, you know, just looking back on like how many days I went, uh, at the first location where nobody came in the gym yeah. for a full day. I was literally there for a full day. Didn't have, didn't have wifi either. So I couldn't, I wasn't on my computer, <laughs> just like on my phone trying to like figure out what to do. Playing a uh, snake. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. My little Nokia. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I would, uh, I'd be like, Oh, you know, we got class this afternoon. I'm going to set up everything for class. I'd set up. And just wait and nobody show oh, up. No. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna clean this up. <laughs> Got class tonight. I'm gonna set up. Nobody shows up. I'm like, all right. <laughs> but uh, so it's cool to see the gym like crazy packed. Yeah, that's it's really like, good. It's like yeah. setting the table for dinner, throwing the food out, and nobody <laughs> shows up to eat. <laughs> oh, we'll save this for leftovers. <laughs> nobody eats it tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna eat this gym tomorrow. Um, so just kind of in in summary, we talked about um, if you're if you're going to start doing something like this, having a having a, a reasonable financial base to be able to pay your rent for the, probably the first year, especially if you're signing a year lease, mm-hmm. um, what other things do you think are, are critical? What two, two or three other things are, are critical? I would say, like I talked about with uh, hosting my first strongman competition and then the light bulb kind of went off and yeah. I was like, this seems to be working, uh, would be know your target audience mm. and know what your gym has to offer. Because honestly, if someone were to come uh, into my gym on day one and say, why should I come here and not uh, California Family Fitness? Yeah. I don't really have an answer. I could say like, oh, we got some strongman stuff. Yeah. Um, but there there was really nothing that like set me apart. Um, uh, you know, why should I go to uh, uh, this CrossFit gym? Well, because you can't do CrossFit in CalFit. Like they have a reason. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so knowing your target uh, market or audience uh, what you have to offer or why people should come to your gym, um, is important. Are you going to train high school athletes? Are you going to be a powerlifting gym, Mm -hmm. a weightlifting gym? Uh, so to know where you're going in your direction, I think is probably most important thing. Um, um, and then I would say past that, I had a thought that I, that slipped my mind. Um, it's gotta be around here somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so yeah, knowing your knowing your target market, man, you, can, I you can think about it too, and we can just edit this. Yeah, <laughs> hmm. take a moment. Steps one through three is what the internet likes for some yeah. reason. So we talked about uh, money. How oh we, yeah. So so uh, th- actually, this isn't another bullet point, but this is just something that uh, I think is important. Um, you have to actually. Uh, actually be or have the the personality or the desire to be a gym owner. Mm. Um, it's kind of the same thing with like, uh, when people ask me about YouTube videos, um, and they're like, how do you like, I really want to start my YouTube channel. And you know, I say like, not everyone has to start a YouTube channel mm. or just cause you, you know, like working out in a gym doesn't mean you have to open your own gym. Yeah. Right. Um, some people are good gym owners and some people are not, some people are good uh, uh, with other people. Some people are not, but it's, you know, as far as the YouTube videos, like, uh, where, you know, someone uh, recently asked like, where do you get, you know, your ideas? And I'm like, I don't know. I just like think of them. Um, and they're like, I just can't think of any ideas to make for a YouTube channel. And I'm like, maybe you shouldn't make make a YouTube YouTube channel. channel, You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, you know, asking like a musician, like, where do you think of these songs? It's like, it just comes. You don't really know. And, and it's the same with a, with a gym. Like, uh, if you're, uh, some people just aren't great at, Working with other people. It's very cool. public. And totally fine to watch the NBA and not know a lick of basketball. Yeah. You can be an NBA fan. Everyone watches the NFL. doesn't mean you like football. doesn't mean you're good at football. doesn't mean you should ever play football. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Same is true of podcasts, by the way. Yeah, yeah, all <laughs> yeah, exactly. of it. And, yeah. and that does, shouldn't discourage people from trying. If you really want to yeah. do it, maybe you should do it. But I think what Alan's also saying in there, too, is like it sounds dumb because there's all these people on the internet r- ranting about being entrepreneurs and CEOs now. So it makes people that are actually doing stuff look stupid. But like, part of our job as a YouTuber, content creator, podcaster is just thinking. And so when people yeah. say like, oh, bro, all you do is film yourself for 10 minutes, edit it for 10 minutes, put it on YouTube. Like, bro, I thought about this for years, <laughs> let alone months of what idea is coming next. When, what, yeah. what, uh, I want to get Alan on the yeah. show. What fits best? What will he talk about? Like all these thoughts go on. And so like thinking is part of the job. And so if you're just blindly watching Untamed Strength YouTube, thinking about what you're going to do, you should put more of that energy thinking about the, the content you're going to create. Yeah, right. or to say like, oh, that looks owning your own gym and making YouTube videos and getting paid for it looks cool. I'm going to do it. Yeah. You know, it's like, looks easy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Don't do it um, because you can't think of anything else to do. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, but that didn't answer your question of what three things. So, uh, we talked about having your uh, probably first year saved up, mm-hmm. um, to having direction. You yeah. Know, so knowing your target audience or your target market. Right. Um, and then what, what were the three criteria we're talking about? Just, Three things for yeah. starting a gym. Three, yeah, three yeah. best th- th- things to summarize it or to uh, have in your head before you start. Hmm. One I think more. that I think that the personality thing is probably that. Yeah, that ties the, in well. Yeah, I think that's probably the the third. And it's hard to explain. Like you explained it well, but people still won't get it. Like you may have to sit at a desk for nine to nine to nine. For years. Yeah. Like you have to, and it was like, because I've talked to friends and people online, I love being in the gym. Like if I could just be in a gym all day, like, no, I like the gym. I've done it for 15 years and I don't want to sit in a gym all day. Like it's not fun. You don't, cleaning bars all day isn't fun. You could love equipment and love engineering of it and cleaning bars all day isn't fun. Like you can love Ferraris and cleaning a Ferrari all day is not fun. You know, like it's very different from being on the ground, on the floor all day. I've trained, I love training people. I love training. I trained people from nine in the morning till 12 at night at my gym and a commercial gym for three years. And I was over it. Like I, it's a, that's 12 hours a day of talking, yeah. which I kind of do now anyways, but it's not always fun. And so just cause you love bench press, squat and deadlift doesn't mean that you're made for these things. Yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to turn your hobby into, you know, work. Um, sometimes, you know, being in the gym for a lot of people is a release, right? I mean, yeah. They go to their job and they love going to the gym and, uh, you know, uh, having that release or doing that hobby. They look forward to it. But when you're in the gym all day, maybe you stop looking forward to it. Maybe you yeah. can't wait to leave. You know what I mean? And I'm not uh, trying to be negative. No. But, uh, you don't always have to turn your hobby into into work. Um, uh, and then uh, with that, I, I often get asked, you know, is opening a gym worth it? And uh, I'll always say, I'm not the one to tell you whether or not it's worth it. Uh, and worth what, you know what I mean? Like I don't, when I, uh, first opened up untamed strength, I didn't care what anyone would say, uh, in terms of, Hey, you know, this is actually gonna be really hard or you might lose all your money, uh, or you might, uh, you know, have to sleep in the gym, uh, because you can't pay rent, you know, uh, for an apartment. I I was just like, don't care, don't care, don't care. I want to do this. You know what I mean? So, uh, it was definitely worth it, but what is worth it yeah. to you, you know? There's uh, risk uh, starting anything. Uh, you know, me and Omar yeah. had a podcast and it was really successful. I lost a bunch of money on it. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I'm starting another company coming up. I'm dumping a bunch of money into it right now. Is it worth it? I don't know. I'm highly enjoying it. I think it's going to do good. Am I going to lose a bunch of money? Maybe. Who knows? Or could I make a bunch of money? Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. So for me, yeah, same idea. Like, yeah. it's worth it. Like, you tell me, Mike, dumb investment? Nah, fuck you. I'm going to do it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, you always learn stuff something yeah i failed i failed two businesses and i've had two successful ones so my odds are good right now i'm gonna keep batting 500 and head towards retirement yeah yeah well i think we've um covered this as much as we can in one episode alan where can people find you exactly uh instagram at untamed strength if you youtube alan thrall or untamed strength you'll find the youtube channel the website is trainuntamed.com and the gym untamed strength is in sacramento california um that's it check her out i'm solid mike 2k's instagram twitter you can find me at untamed strength sometimes <laughs> i am at the jim mcd on all the social medias the show is 50 percent facts where percent is a word do us a favor subscribe rating review thank you yeah hand this whole idea over to a friend you pro- everybody's got a friend that wants to open a gym hand them this episode <laughs> just just pass it right over <laughs>